All right, welcome back to All Niggas and Friends, friends as well as niggas. I'm Kid Fury. And I'm Crystal. Another episode here of The Read, still mm-hmm. in quarantine. Yep. Um, I don't even know if I care no more at this point. Life is nothing but a dream. <laughs> um, this is just life now. It just is what it is. But let's move on with our normal uh, gatherings and concepts black excellence this week because last week i actually intended to mention this and forgot this week black excellence is going to go to jada essence hall for being the current uh drag race america's drag superstar whatever the (laughs) the winning title (laughs) actually is america's next drag superstar current drag superstar is jada essence hall um super excited about that as well as the fact that my fave Heidi and closet is miss congeniality of this season of drag race so like black winner black miss congeniality both of them deserved it amazing um, Thought Jada it could killed not be it done. week after week after week so with everything that's going on and the time that i mean it being pride month i am quite satisfied and happy to see two black queens in those winning positions. So congratulations to you guys. Yes. And to anybody who had a problem with the Brown queen winning this season, choke. Um, <laughs> literally nobody cares. <laughs> Get over it. Um, anyone who has anything to do with like the actual drag race to do knows that Jada earned that shit. The bitch was killing it week after week after week after week after week. And this season was actually a, like, there was, a lot of talent in this last season of Drag Race. So, of course, everybody had their favorite and everybody has somebody they always wanted to win. And Ladia wanted to pick the frail white girl to be the winner yet again, as you want every (laughs) single season. Gigi Good is a fantastic drag queen. (laughs) Crystal Method. Like, literally everybody was really great this season. But you couldn't take the black girl and it is what it is. And she won too bad. All right, so moving on. Um, Amen. This week in our Hot Tots, we bear bears. This first story comes from Uh-oh. our byway of Tory Lanes. Tory Lanes and Spectacular, because that is his name that was given to him. Spectacular of Pretty Ricky apparently got into it on social media over sample clearance. Now, it started after a clip of Akon and uh, Takashi69, who had on... Oh, my God. (laughs) He had on sort of a a sorbet-colored lace front that was snatched back in a high ponytail. And this nigga looked like Shawshank Barbie. And (laughs) for whatever reason, was given... The opportunity to use the fucking beat from Locked Up, Akon's old record, and do a remix for today. Get it? Because he was locked up. Whatever. Yeah, I mean, but who hasn't been? So, <laughs> right. This could have gone to literally anyone in the game. Right. Um, but Tory Lanez tweeted. So what y'all telling me is Akon gave the Locked Up remix slash sample to someone else and not me. Bunch of crying, laughing emojis. I'm going back to bed, man. So I don't know when he attempted to get that sample for his record. Mm -hmm. Like, I think that every Tory Lanez song has some sort of a sample from 2002 on it. So it's not really shocking to me, but I don't know exactly what he's referencing in this tweet. However, Spectacular responded when he saw the tweet from Tory and said, you should have just stole it like grind on me and your body. Why stop now? Just keeping it to Virgil's. Let's pull over. (laughs) Oh, no. (laughs) So what the fuck does two Virgils mean? Because I don't know the origin of this particular Oh, my God. (laughs) I've seen Virgil talk him some mess. I also know that Virgil, I saw like a photo of a $50 bill that was photoshopped with his face on it. Mm Mm-hmm. Does this have to do with the money that he donated? Yes. yes. Okay. Niggas are calling it just basically the number 50 has been replaced with Virgil because of his donation. So Got it. Keeping it to Virgil's. 
Well, Tory Lanez went on Instagram Live, I mean, his stories, and responded saying, stole what? Actually, I bought the rights from whoever signs you and publishes your music. But I guess you weren't a part of that conversation. Go stare in someone's <laughs> eyes and, and rub on someone's thighs and leave me out of this one. Good night, my black brother, with the fist of solidarity emoji. Mm. But it didn't stop there. Oh, no. What? That was all I saw. So I didn't know it kept going. Spectacular posted on his stories. Look here, Daystar. First of all, Tory Lane's <laughs> name is Daystar. I want to put, address that. <laughs> Secondly, anytime that a black person says, look here, like just prepare mm-hmm. for whatever is on the other end of that because usually it's going to be something that you probably won't care for. Right. It's usually going to be an attempt at a read at the very least. Look here together from um, the Negro perspective is usually just a warning that things to come yes. are going to look grim for you. Precisely. He says, look here, day start. Now, you know, that's cap because it's a baseball cap emoji. So, you know, niggas use the blue baseball cap emoji to say cap is in lie lie when lie is right there and also three letters but it's and also (laughs) three letters it's right there but okay how are you going to buy masters from someone other than the master's owner all this talk of masters and owners right now is not i'm not liking it what type of business you're doing i let you sample our records you didn't ask us you put it out without our permission and we still let it ride i could have snatched your song down like you did mine's after you did some bad business on a record that i paid you for for my single but hey i still love and support you what anybody to proofread that's what supporting each other is about black man Toy Lanes then um You are slipped, fucking kidding. <laughs> slipped into the shade rooms DMs and sent them no. on over. <laughs> no. The receipts, the actual receipts for uh his song, Yes Sir. I don't know how to read these kinds of things, this uh rec- recording label jargon. But it seems here as though Daystar Peterson did in fact clear uh the your body sample for his record it seems here that um the boys of pretty ricky were owed a 30 percent cut all together okay. of the money that was sent over to sony slash atv and i haven't heard anything from there so it sounds like perhaps spectacular smith needs to call up some people on his side of things mm-hmm. yeah. and start asking some questions um but also why did we do this on instagram why didn't we just call our attorneys why did we have to use all of the emojis to address this financial issue i'm confused and also i'd really love to know who and why um who and why that lace front happened to What's her face? I've been Who trying installed to put that, it? Yeah, out of my mind because why did they do it? I was not um, ready for that full ass Ariana Grande ponytail at all. In fact, I could not watch that video. Looking at Akon like smiling next to that motherfucker, I was like, nah, actually, I'm gonna just wait. It looks like so many love and hip hop scenes where an a burgeoning young female artist is sitting in the studio with fucking. What's that nigga's name? Rich Dollars. Rich Dollars. <laughs> and he's pretending to enjoy whatever is coming out of the speakers because this young, you know, <laughs> yep. La Marina bunny is just, you know, is the one he's got his eye on. That's what that video looks like. I found it disturbing. Yes, um, I agree. <laughs> And I just don't know why Takashi 69 keeps happening. Like, front all your lace if you want to. I just don't understand anything that has to do with you. But that is separate of the issue between these two hip-hop R&B brothers. I don't know what made Spectacular think that Tory Lanez could put music out 
for the purpose of like making money. Like this isn't a mixtape on SoundCloud or something. Like this is music that's out on all streaming services available for purchase. Like there's just no way that the samples wouldn't have been cleared. I don't know why he thought that. It just don't make sense to me. So it's the sort of thing where maybe you should have double checked the records and made sure you knew what you was talking about before you decided to just pop off at the mouth and be crazy on Instagram. Because now look at you. Mm. Why would I mean, I'm sure have there done that? that. I mean, that just don't make sense. I'm sure there are artists that get stuff that put you samples or whatever for their stuff and don't clear them and just say, fuck it. You know, but like you're saying, I I really don't see why Tory Lanez would have just jumped at the Tory Lanez, who has every I'm sure every opportunity, every resource to get songs cleared right. or try at least. I don't know why he would just be like, man, I ain't giving them pretty Ricky Nick's stuff <laughs> <laughs> after attempting to, to to sample two of their songs. It just doesn't make any sense. Yeah, but I also just don't understand why we needed to be privy to any of this stuff. Spectacular was like, hmm. <laughs> at home in his bed like the rest of us when he saw that tweet and decided to yep. just go for it yep and that's the problem you know the internet is only going to get worse the longer niggas stay inside it's just mm. going to get worse so you the might boredom as well. is just yep. fucking up. prepare so yourself even though i guess new york technically did their phase one reopen today i didn't go no fucking where but i guess some shit is open now i'm still not going out there I bought some water and some probiotics today. That was my journey out into the wasteland. Yeah, I'm not doing Um, it. But you girls have your fun. I mean, you've been having your fun. The girls who really want to go out. So, I mean, what difference does it make? Well, today in this chapter of Dragging Your White Right, let's discuss Miss Leah Michelle, who decided to join in on the... um, the PR demanded George Floyd tweets. Lee Michelle tweeted on May 29th, George Floyd did not deserve this. This is an isolated incident and it must end. Black Lives Matter. This was followed by a tweet from one Samantha Marie Ware, actress, badass, diva, and a Glee alum. Can you technically call? I'm going to do it. Um, she responded and said, LMAO, I'm going to stop. The LMAO at the beginning sent me, and I want to just explore that because yeah, <laughs> you have to be so certain, so aware, <laughs> so like <laughs> lived in with someone's bullshit okay. for them to be tweeting <laughs> What Leah Michelle tweeted, and for you to start the dragging with LMAO, that was that was an inspiring tactic yes. in, in the war of reading. That let me know she screamed laughing when she said yes. that shit. She <laughs> said, is this bitch serious to her ceiling with her mouth wide open? She did. She tackled. She could not believe it. So... Samantha said, LMAO, remember when you made my first television gig a living hell? Because I'll never forget. I believe you told everyone that if you had the opportunity, you would shit in my wig, amongst other traumatic microaggressions that made me question a career in Hollywood. Well, (laughs) Samantha might have um, struck the match and lit the fuse, but oh, everybody lent into that. Correct. That's right. All sorts of people who have worked with Leah Michelle alongside her and whatnot tapped in and were like, oh, yes, she also was steaming trash to me. <laughs> um, <laughs> like the whole cast. <laughs> pretty much like everyone who was ever on Glee, whether it was a cast member, a PA, Extended someone. Extended guest like, appearance, anybody. <laughs> anybody. They all said she was trash. All of the girls were like, no, I actually remember when you were disgusting. One person said um, they did background on Glee. They said, you burped directly in my face and stepped on my foot without apologizing or even acknowledging my presence. What a bitch. Another said, when I was on the set of Glee, you told me I didn't belong there at the cast lunch table, even though two of the other cast members wanted me to sit there. Fuck you, Leah. You don't give a fuck. Someone else said that she called them, she called background actors cockroaches. That I mean, this is just, those are just a few of wow. people. And those aren't even like 
you know what I'm saying? Like main, these are people who like were understudies or yeah. background, you know what I'm saying? But like literally main cast, camera, lights, everybody, wardrobe, extras, like, everybody. Everybody was like, oh yeah, Leah Michelle's the devil. <laughs> um, it was a hilarious night for me personally. <laughs> yeah, I definitely got my cackles on because as someone who definitely loved Glee when it came on, I never liked the character Rachel Berry. Exactly. Something never seemed right about Leah Michelle to me. I just, like, she never just clicked all the way over for me. And you're not even the best singer on the show. So it was just kind of like... Right. It's one of those things where you have a feeling that the actor's personality and the character's personality exactly. are a lot alike. Yes. And so for everybody to come out and be like, yes, all the things you thought were terrible about that bitch are true. It's just like, I knew it. And they constantly put her in our fucking faces like she could out sing Amber. And that has never been the case. So I have been over that girl for a long fucking time. Seeing her get what she had coming to her was it was beautiful to me. Absolutely sweet. She offered an apology. Bitch, please. How you gonna sh- you gonna shit in somebody's wig? If you tell a black how you gonna tell oh, a black apology. woman, nigga, girl, girl, shit in my wig, bitch. <laughs> so this is one, two, three, four paragraphs. I refuse to read all of them. I will just start from the beginning and stop when I'm ready. She said, when I tweeted the other day, it was meant to be a show of support for our friends, neighbors, and communities of color during this really difficult times. But the responses I received to what I posted have made me also focus specifically on how my own behavior towards fellow cast members was perceived by them. While I don't remember ever making this specific statement, and I've never judged others by their background or their color or color of their skin, that's not really the point. Let's pull over. If that's not really the point, then why did you mention it? Right. Because it is the point. And why are you like you're only going to point out this? I've never judged others by the background or color of their skin. And I don't remember saying that because you're trying to basically invalidate what this black woman said that you did, which you know, you motherfucking did. And I know that you motherfucking did. And I wasn't there because 511 goddamn people have also (laughs) said she was trash to me too. Exactly. Yes. You're not going to tell me all these black people are lying on you. You just not. And it's not even just the black people, but you're not going to tell me that all the black people are lying on you. Thank you. It wasn't even just black people on that set. It was every guy. Damn Heather Moore said the same the thing, but her dumbass interpretive thing. <laughs> she continues. What matters is that I clearly acted in ways which hurt other people. Whether it was my privileged position and perspective that caused me to be perceived as insensitive or inappropriate at times, or whether it was just my immaturity and me being and me just being unnecessarily difficult, I apologize for my behavior and for any pain which I have caused. We all can grow and change, and I've definitely used these past several months to reflect on my own shortcomings. Then she talks about how she's going to be a mama and she needs to learn better, blah, blah, blah. blah, Oh, we don't care. (laughs) She never once names or addresses Samantha or what she said about her. She doesn't address anything that it was said about anybody the fuck else. And the whole thing, to me, just seems incredibly loaded. It seems like somebody who probably gets paid a whole lot of money said, here's how you write these types of things. Oh, yeah, she didn't write that. (laughs) I mean, I know that she did it. I'm thinking, you know, at best, maybe she skimmed over it before she, <laughs> you know, hit send. You know what I'm saying? But like, it's so loaded. It doesn't really take genuine, like, responsibility for anything. And it's just, it feels as forced as the initial tweet did. Like, I know that a lot of people, especially white people, are getting messages from, you know, PR, publicity, marketing, whoever the fuck, their labels, their producers, their managers, and telling them, you know, you need to do this too. So the girls just don't even look over here. And like, fine, whatever. Mm -hmm. But you're going to have situations like this where sometimes someone's going to be like, oh, hey, girl, (laughs) about that. Um, (laughs) Remember all that racism a couple years ago? Um, And at the same time, it's just like what sort of annoys me about it is the thought of like how many talented black people and especially black women probably quit the industry. You know what I mean? We probably right. are missing out on so many Violas and Lupitas and Carries and Hallies and whoever the fuck else, because they just were like, you know what? I'm not 
going to handle all of this bullying, all of the mm-hmm. microaggression, all of the racism. I don't get paid enough for this. I don't get respected at all. And probably just, you know, go the fact home, go home or go back to doing whatever the fuck they was doing before because of shit like this. And I think that there are way too many. I don't know Leo Michelle from a campaign, so I'm not going to act like I do. But I'm sure there are a lot of women who are well aware of uh, the fact that they can sort of lessen the numbers or thin the herd by just Mm -hmm. bullying the fuck out of people on set and making them feel really small or inferior until they just leave. Because it's like, unfortunately, that girl could have actually shit at somebody's wig and there's a good chance that the white people would have been like, but she's our star and we love her voice. Is there any way that you can just... She shit in my wig. I'm going to kill that bitch. Right. Like, there's no... You know what I mean? So when it's down to that, like, think about this. Mama sent one tweet. (laughs) Ms. Ware? (laughs) She she sent one tweet and all of these girls were like, the end of Mean Girls. Who else? (laughs) Yes, has been victimized victimized by Rachel Berry. So, for so many people to have like the same types of experiences with with someone and nobody said anything, that has to speak to the power of like... And the privilege that someone like you, like many white stars or, you know, people in, in higher positions at work, like the power that they have and the fact that you can behave like that and get away with it. Because I'm sure the people who gave that girl that job knew that she was getting on everybody's nerves, being disrespectful, saying whatever the oh, fuck. Oh, yeah, definitely. And it's fine. Because she's bringing in money in their eyes or whatever. So it's just, like, frustrating to think of how many people are, like, having to sit and be the fuck quiet and not say anything. Mm-hmm. That's why Amber did that whole hashtag where she was just like, how many other people, how many other black, you know, actors, performers, whoever, just people have had to like stand by or be silent in the workplace or whatever because white folks like this girl were yeah. making their lives living hell. And it was either not have a job or pull out your eyelashes with my bare hands. Like, right. which one is it? that I can do so right and like you said I'm sure this has happened to countless black people and other people of color and I'm sure that it's not even just people like taking the chance to be assholes just because they can I'm sure some of it is like just being entirely too full of yourself and really feeling yourself because of the success of the show you own or whatever else and just feeling even more empowered and entitled to just like this this is what i don't understand it is so easy to just be respectful or nice to people or to just say nothing like it's just so easy to do that but instead you deliberately go out of your way to be a bitch and you are a bitch so frequently and so effortlessly that random fucking people on set remember you this way people who was ugly once people who was ugly the whole fucking time they all say the same thing like bitch Come on now. I just don't, I don't get the white entitlement, but she got, she had to come in. So, but I'm like, you will still be fine. You will still likely work and, and be just fine. Even through all her husband's probably rich. You know what I'm saying? I'm sure that it's really not going to affect your income or anything like that. So you could, at the very least, ed- issue an actual apology or like actually acknowledge what you have done, even if it was to just the initial person who called you the fuck out. You know what I mean? Yeah. But to sit back and like not even be grateful for the fact that you were you went through however many seasons of Glee, six, seven seasons of Glee, and nobody dragged your ass then. Like, I'm surprised that you get to act this way to so many people for all of them years and nobody. Because let me say something. If you burp in my face on set, it's going to make the news. <laughs> like, I, the, <laughs> much the less threatened to shit in my wig. Bitch, do you know how much money I spent on them fucking wigs? I wish you would, actually. You think I won't take your life behind a wig? Like... <laughs> that's the thing like the shit she was saying is just you actually should have got your ass beat right there on set in front of everybody it's a miracle that you made it this long without anybody exposing you but now it's out there and those of us who always had a feeling about your ass we are now vindicated yeah that's pretty sweet yeah um Fuck speaking out of, of here, white girl. women before i move on i listened to that lady gaga album before that we talked about before um don't hate it. I'm also a gay man, so there's that. Um, it's a lot of uns uns. 
You know, here's the thing. It's not as much as I thought. It a lot of it is just like straight up pop. It does sound like somewhere between that Faye Monster album and whatever she was doing after. It honestly just sounds like a bunch of drag queen music that y'all only like unless it comes out of the mouth of a white woman. Like it literally just sounds like a bunch of <laughs> I wasn't even able to read. Like again, I don't hate I think it's not bad. I actually kind of like the album, but it just sounds like a whole bunch of songs that drag queens make. But y'all just don't <laughs> seem to know how to process it because it's not Ooh, a cisgender. Yes. Got outside. you. Mm. Anyway, in stores now. Check it out. <laughs> Well, all right then. Um, all right. So I don't remember how long ago, a couple of days ago, uh, I woke up a bit earlier than usual. I've been knocking out a taste earlier. So I was up at like 10 a.m., which is early for me. I'm proud. And um, I looked at Twitter. I had about 400 messages uh, from people all over the interwebs about Trina and some comments that she had on her still quite new radio morning show on 99 Gems in Miami with Strict Daddy. And they were discussing um, the protest and stuff going on in the street and whatnot. And Trina, who sounded incredibly agitated... <coughs> was discussing how a friend of hers had, I guess, had her boutique vandalized. And then she went on to refer to people in the streets as animals and how the curfew needed to be moved up and they needed to get them off the street and try as trick daddy might to get her to be like, hey girl, no, let's not do this. Um, it didn't really seem to work or help at all. She also said that she, you know, she don't be worried when when a cop, if a cop is gonna pull her over because she has her paperwork in order or something to that affect her license or something like that. Which, again, that doesn't mean anything. Cash out. It's nope. not like a that doesn't work. Um. So. How do I describe that morning? Mm, I knew it was going to be unpleasant for you. I knew. I just kind of... I was pretty much kind of like Tiffany Pollard in that photo of her on the bed with them sunglasses and the rest of her whole ass outfit on. (laughs) And... (laughs) I was like, well, God, um, I guess you knew to just have me in a situation where I was going to be at home and depressed anyway, because it seems like I'm, you know, in a ideal position to sort of deal with whatever this is. Um, you have decided that I just can't have Trina anymore. And so... <sighs> Here I am, Lord. Yeah. Let's figure this all out. So obviously, jokes aside, I was very, very like hurt by it and upset. And it just doesn't make any sense to me. Like, I don't understand. Like, you have a whole day, Trina Day, that wasn't even that long ago in Miami for like your contribution to people in the community of Miami and stuff. Like, it just didn't add up. It just didn't make any sense to me. And I was just like, Upset by it, but then also dealing with the fact that everybody for like two straight days is like, hey girl, so about your fave. Yeah. Um, some even asking me to text her and I guess get her together. Oh I don't. God. Y'all are weird. No, Trina. Um, <laughs> so that wasn't going to happen. That was a waste of characters. Um, but yeah, I just, I don't understand. It didn't make any sense to me. Like, I don't understand how so many celebrities right now are not reading the room. <laughs> like, like I, I don't get it. And I understand, you know, you have someone personally who's affected by this. I feel like many of us do. So right. it just doesn't really 
make sense. Like I said, this shit didn't add up. There's a whole reason why people are linking to all kinds of different places that you can donate and all different, you know, not just for the victims or the families of the victims. There's all sorts of people who are, you know, reaching out to one another in different ways they could help, you know? So it really just is counterproductive and really absurd for you to take the stance of, oh, well, you know, animals in the street or whatever, without being like incredibly and explicitly clear on what it is that you're trying to say and mindful of what it is you're trying to say and how you say it, especially as a Black person in this country right now with a platform. I mean, you, it's not even just like Trina, the rapper with a platform. This is a radio show. Like you literally have a platform mm-hmm. now to talk. So you have to be mindful in the way that you go about doing that stuff. Like, cops don't give a fuck about your, your license, your registration or whatever. They're like, they don't give a fuck about you not caring about it either. Like, right. They will still snatch you up and have you missing or dead or whatever the fuck. And so that shit just sucked. And I was literally in bed for like two days. Like, yeah. okay. I mean, I was already pretty fucked up and depressed like before any of that. But after that, I was just kind of like, okay, girl, like nothing makes any fucking sense. Up is down, right is left. I don't get any of this shit. It just doesn't make any fucking sense to me. But like I said on Twitter, I don't really love like i'm not in love with any celebrity more than black advancement and preservation i just don't it's disappointing and it does hurt and suck or whatever but they're just people like y'all niggas make mistakes and you fuck up and you say dumb shit and you do dumb shit and i feel like that's the whole approach that we have to talking about celebrities anyways Mm -hmm. to sort of like highlight the human in them and how a lot of the time they just fuck up and like do dumb shit and a lot of times you need to be dragged for it and all that other shit but it's like girl right now it's not the time for anything but sense not right now (laughs) it's not the time for anything but like moving the scale in the right right direction if you're not with that you're literally pushing it back so you have to just either push with us or move completely out of the way Mm -hmm. and let us get the fuck of work done. Nobody got time for in-betweens and gray areas and all that other stuff. So yeah, really disappointing, very heartbreaking. I will say that, um, she reached out to me. She sent me like a DM on Instagram and, uh, I had the chance to like actually speak to her on the phone about it. So, um, I appreciated that at least for me as an individual, I got the opportunity as someone who, because I I came to the realization that she's a big part of the reason I have pride for my city at all, because Mm. Miami, as I've said before, is what it is. It's very racist. It's predominantly, you know, a Latinx uh, environment. And a lot of people don't, give a fuck about black people like straight up don't give a fuck don't have a problem saying it out loud being incredibly racist and it's also just like a place i've always said miami like unless you try to make it a nightlife or real estate girl god bless <laughs> you know and and if you're not <laughs> if you can if you cannot speak spanish good luck yeah you know? so go somewhere else <laughs> Having, like, the pride that I do in in having a fucking party called 305 Live and all this other shit about, like, the culture that I appreciate, she's a huge part of that. So I was like, I don't even understand what anything means today. So the fact that I got to talk to her and really, like, go down the list of all of the wrong and all of the fucked up and hear from her actual voice recognition and understanding of, like how this was fucked up for me at least i got to put like i'm glad at least that i got to like satisfy that miami child in me that was incredibly heartbroken but like i said to her girl you fucked up Mm -hmm. and like i don't think that a lot of people are understanding like a lot of artists in atlanta who are talking about atlanta don't do this to atlanta don't do this to atlanta and all this sort of stuff i don't know if i said this on the podcast but like this is all of that stuff is a symptom of a virus. You know what I mean? It's like ideally black businesses would not be vandalized or, you know, destroyed or whatever, especially small black ones. But all of that stuff 
in general wouldn't be going on if it wasn't for the greater problem at hand. Like when you have the flu, it isn't really the flu itself mm-hmm. that fucks your shit up. Come on, preacher. It's the like nausea, it's the fever and mm-hmm. all of the other symptoms that you have is what kicks your ass. But that's your body's natural reaction to this thing that has invaded its fucking space and is threatening its life. Right. So nobody, I don't think anybody's just like, yeah, fuck up that small black business. Like, <laughs> you know what right. I mean? And like yeah. I said, people will help if they can, if you can or whatever. But turning your your attention to people who threw something through a window or whatever on top of the fact that it's the ops that's dropping the fucking bricks off and stones and all that shit over here for us to do that shit in the first fucking place Mm. and it don't even be us that do it so it just doesn't make sense i think that she understands that now i hope that she understands that now i told her like i want to believe that you don't but i don't know you so all i can do is just like believe what i believe and not believe what i don't but that shit sucked. Last week sucked. Everything sucks. And I'm just tired of revelations. Like, at this point, girl, where is the last page? <laughs> shit. It does feel like this whole year is just revelations because every hour is some new form of bullshit that we have to deal with. And I knew as soon as that Trina clip came out that, like... It, <sighs> I knew that you was going to have to deal with like God only knows how many people tagging you in it and asking you about it and all that other shit. But for me, it was like the disgust in her voice when she was talking about these people that had me like, damn, you really it's like you really just don't fuck with us at all. Like you really are disgusted by these people like you really are calling human beings animals over a store. And like, and for me, it's like the same thing I said last week when it comes right down to it. I don't care about things over people. And even if it's a small black business, I hope that you are able to rebuild your business and get your things back and all that other stuff. But we are talking about a problem that has existed in America since them motherfuckers kidnapped us and brought us over here. So I don't, I just don't understand how any of you, especially those of you who are so comfortable right now that you don't have to worry about rent, food, bills or any of that other shit. I just really don't see how you decide that you're going to speak on these troubles that you know are real. In any other situation, you would be fully able to talk about how racism affects black people and all this other shit. But when it comes to this, y'all just decide that everything that makes sense goes out the fucking window. So... I was, yeah, I was sad about it. I was disappointed. But like you said, all of these celebrities ultimately are human. They will fuck up. And it's up to you, the individual person, to decide whether you're going to forgive them after they apologize, whether you're going to take it to be genuine or not, whether you're going to still support them. That's up to you. But it's. I think it's time for us to stop looking to these celebrities to be like a beacon or a voice or anything other than the entertainers that they always were. Like... I know social media see, has brought them closer to people, but like, see, this is why, like some people were saying to me, like, this is why we shouldn't put celebrities on pedestals or whatever at the same time. And I'm like, I think that's bullshit. I think it's ridiculous. Like pedestal. I don't know what you would define as a pedestal. I think that it's perfectly okay to celebrate somebody that you think that had, do you think that has like someone who you admire Someone who you look up to, someone who just has talent, you know, I definitely think that I'm not a stan. Like, I w- I'm going to approach fandom quite differently, I think, regardless mm-hmm. from here on out. Yeah. And especially because of this, um, which is perfectly OK. But there's a reason that people admire and lift up a lot of celebrities if you don't that's perfectly okay and trina beyonce they aren't the only people that i'm incredibly inspired by and moved by and stuff like that there's plenty of people in my everyday fucking life that inspire me you know what i'm saying so like it's not just about you know oh well we gotta stop putting all of this stuff in celebrities because they're human too and they're like i understand that i completely understand that it just it doesn't change the fact that someone that you admire or look up to could make a fucking human mistake or error and dis fucking point you we've been through it countless times trina wasn't the first one she was probably the hardest i've been hit because i'm from fucking miami so what do you expect but at the same time i don't 
really see. I mean, I see what you are saying because, like, okay, let's move into the next one. Well, I'm just saying, I'm not saying that we shouldn't celebrate, you know, celebrities or musicians, the things that they do and all that. I'm saying. No, I know that you aren't saying Right. For this particular thing, it's like, I feel like y'all are looking to celebrities for something that they don't really know shit about. And y'all want them to have these answers or these explanations for you that they just don't have. And when they inevitably disappoint you, it ends up being a huge thing. But see, I don't think it's entirely that. That's why I'm like. So the next story is about Terry Crews. Oh, okay. And well, let's just do it then. Amen. Let's just do it. So Terry Crews got niggas on his ass again because he tweeted yesterday, uh, defeating white supremacy without white people creates black supremacy. Equality is the truth. Like it or not, we are all in this together. And he said, any black person who calls me a coon or and Uncle Tom for promoting equality is a black supremacist because they have determined who's black and who's not. Um, what a fucking dumbass. So... You see how that don't make no sense? You see? <laughs> At some point, somebody has to like... I know that the, I'd love to make the Real Friend app like an actual thing. Don't know the beginning or how to actually do any of that. But someone should at the very least start mm-hmm. a course, mm-hmm. a night school, something where you can like take when to shut the fuck up one-on-one. And I think that, you know, celebrities should take the course. Because see, for me, I think that we sort of give everyone with a quote-unquote platform this idea that they should have a stance or share a stance on something or speak especially in times like this when so many people are granted i think that sometimes you should have a stance specifically like how we talk about how many white people white influencers white celebrities need to use their platforms because of the power that it will have in a situation like this but i don't think that just because you have a a a platform a, a following or whatever that you need to have something to say or whatever and with terry cruz i feel like after the gabriel union thing and and whatever the fuck else he has been like (laughs) desperately attempting to be like hey guys look i'm making an effort everybody look me look at me i'm trying i'm trying i'm trying i'm trying it's like girl you can actually just sit Mm -hmm. and actually do the work and try and then let the actions follow because it's not helping that every time you come out here trying to get us to see that you're making an effort, you just do or say something way worse. You're like, you're walking backwards and you don't even realize that you are. <laughs> right. Cause if this is his attempt at doing better then nigga, I just have no idea what the fuck's going on over there because again, them tweets didn't even make sense. Black supremacy, nigga, shut up. Talking about people calling him a coon or black supremacist because they deciding who's black and who's not. Like you understand that doesn't even make sense. That coons are black. They are niggas who are chasing white approval and white acceptance. Like you can be that and be black. You actually can't be that and not be black. So like every word has something that means. <laughs> Shut up, nigga. God damn, what a dumbass. And so you can't just use words any way that you want because then right. we don't know what the fuck you're talking about. <laughs> exactly. You don't know what the fuck you're talking about. And this everybody's is where words and aggravated. came from. God and again, damn. as I said, um, nobody's in the mood literally no one has time like i said before i think that we're like this is a very 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 crucial time and when i say that i don't mean that i'm even holding my breath for justice for any of these particular names or hashtags right however i feel like what we can do right now is get more people who need to understand who need to learn the truth that need to learn and understand facts and put action behind them i think that we have the opportunity to do way more of that right now which is also really really important so nobody has time for people especially black people to be out here talking about some bullshit (laughs) tyler james williams who played uh, Terry's son Chris on the show Everybody Hates Chris Oh yes, uh, quoted his tweet and said Terry brother I know your heart and you know I have love for you and always will no one is calling for black supremacy and the narrative that we are hurts our cause and our people we're just vigorously vetting our quote unquote allies because time and time again they have failed us in the past our people are tired of white people who put on a good face and claim they aren't racist while operating and benefiting from the privilege of a clearly racist system we're not trying to do this alone we know we can't 
but we f- refuse to have allies who won't go the distance. I'm not trying to call you out, Terry Crews. You know us all love, but we're rightfully angry right now and fed up with anyone not with our cause wholeheartedly. I don't want to see that energy pointed your way or diverted from the cause. So the comedian Godfrey gave him like a similar reaching out to like, mm-hmm. hey, brother, maybe no more of this. And other people who I think know him. So it's like everybody kind of stepped out on this branch that Terry Crews stepped out onto by his goddamn self. Like, hey, nigga, come on in. This, come this back in here. No We're sense. senses. Yeah. And and let's discuss what you're talking about because it's not working. I also thought he like tried to reach out to Gabriel Union again for some apology talking about how the George Floyd case um was getting him to look within and stuff like that again. I don't even doubt that a lot. I'm paraphrasing. Believe okay. you know what I'm saying, but right. I don't even doubt that a lot of people are like, "Hey, let me do some some inward work, some right. inward thought." But again, what are you saying? Like, <laughs> you are going about this all wrong, and it just feels like somebody needs to sort of step in and be like, "Hey, bruh. Um, let's do the work. Let's let's do the work that we can on figuring out what it is that we need to figure out rather than just acting like we have it all figured out because black supremacy is a thing. Um, black people who are in the streets uh, saying that black lives matter and that um, we're sick and tired of the police. It's not a black supremacy thing. It's, no, it it's isn't. It's really just a we'd like to live thing. And it's a stop killing sense. us. <laughs> That's not it's black supremacy, nigga. In fact, I saw someone saying like, or one of those uh, signs during a protest talking about how matters is like bare minimum. <laughs> like, it really matters is. is like <laughs> it's it's like the bottom right. of barrel when it comes to to request or whatever and in, in existence, like. Not even asking for much. Right. <laughs> it's, like, it's literally just saying, just hey, say girls, that we count. <laughs> our lives matter as well. So let's <laughs> act like it. Like, that's it. So, how you as a black man are tapping into supremacy of black people who are asking for what we're asking for doesn't make any sense. And it does imply that, again, much like you did when you try to toss Gabriel Union's whole entire body underneath the bus, Yes, it just implies that you are out here using the rhetoric that white people want niggas to use so that they can sort of pull, pull like attention back towards their agenda. And nobody has time for that. Like, nobody has time for any of this, girls. Like, you can be quiet. You can be quiet. (laughs) You don't have to say anything. Like... Mm. Wouldn't it be nice? <laughs> it would, but... It's fine. I wouldn't even mind if one of these niggas was, like, being... Because, you know, sometimes the internet will be like, why you ain't saying nothing about the Trump purchase or whatever? I wouldn't even mind if one of these niggas would be like, because I'm dumb. Because I don't believe in myself. Yeah. And I just don't want... I don't have anything <laughs> I don't to know add. what I'm talking <laughs> about, and I don't want to say the wrong thing. It's nothing wrong with that. I'd rather listen. It's nothing Boom. wrong with saying, I need to learn more about this before I say something stupid that I'm going to regret. I don't know why niggas can't admit to just not knowing nothing if terry cruz could admit to not knowing nothing he wouldn't have found himself in these dumbass waters the other day because nigga how you gonna say that white supremacy defeated without white people creates black supremacy when white supremacy (laughs) cannot be defeated without white people it literally cannot and we have like, seen that happen in these past like 12 days when all of a sudden white people are the recipients of police brutality. And now all of a sudden we got city councils taking this shit seriously and talking about disbanding the police in Minneapolis and people fucking marching in the streets for almost two damn weeks now. And all this shit is all of a sudden people are feeling this shift and things are changing. That's because white people are starting to give a fuck and speaking up. Black people have been protesting this shit. I can't can't tell you how many protests I personally have been to. I'm only 37 years old. Black people have been right. protesting this shit since we were allowed to fucking protest. And even before then, we were saying it and nobody ever gave a shit till white people started being if in I gotta trouble If I got to go to too. Union Square one more time, if, if I, I got to stand out and watch the Square Park I went to Park, fucking Union one Square more time. on fucking Saturday. You know how many motherfucking times I done marched since I lived here, my nigga? Nigga, nigga. Not even counting Miami. Like, come on. So, right. like, the a very small percentage of my heart that that still believes that 
you know, people can be good or sometimes have intent. Let's call it the benefit of the doubt portion of my fucking heart. Wanted to believe like, okay, that must be what he was trying to say. Like, I also feel like, I mean, I've said before that we need white people to be, for years we've said that shit on this this podcast right. well, about how important it is for white people to start waking the fuck up as well and putting action and doing something, the yes. shit that, you know, they talk or whatever, they claim to exactly. believe, you know, if they consider themselves allies. Thank and you. it's like, it almost feels like that's what you were trying to say and then you just swerved off the road <laughs> into a canyon and nobody understands why. There was nothing in your path. You just drove off the road for no fucking reason right. talking about some black supremacy see what like that just sounded like it sounded like you were planted there to be honest like, it <laughs> right. sounds like somebody told you to come on the internet and say that shit maybe someone at wherever the fuck america's cut down is from yeah i don't i don't really get it it's not like you were tricked into saying something stupid online you just logged on and nobody tweeted asked. these things of right nobody fucking asked terry cruz and we probably could have guessed based off your recent behavior any fucking way but for you to open your mouth and and be like, not white supremacy or black supremacy. Equality is the truth. Bitch, we've been talking about equality. We've been talking about that shit. And again, these tweets let me know you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. And there's probably nobody around you who can challenge you and you're willing to hear it, especially somebody black. I truly mm. doubt it. Because otherwise, you just wouldn't have said nothing this fucking stupid. If you had a friend that you could go to who could say to you, Terry, my nigga, this is how you wrong and why, then this wouldn't have happened. And I, but you, I, you can't you tell me that celebrity's not hitting the fucking group chat. You can't tell me that. You hit the nail on the head saying that you're willing to listen to. Exactly. A lot, plenty of these niggas have people in their life that hit their line like, hey, so this doesn't work. None of this makes any sense. Let's talk about it. But you have to be willing to listen and not think that you got it all to fucking figure out. And it feels like that's the stance that Terry has been has been taking for like a while on certain things he's been called out of, called out about. And right. like, I'm like, like that shit frustrates me more than any fucking thing. You know what I mean? Because you can be wrong, but you have to like... You have to <laughs> yes be open to learning be and open doing to better. Le- <laughs> exactly, that's it. And that's um, honestly that's something that everybody could do. You can be wrong, just be willing to say, "Damn, my bad. I fucked that up. I learned, and now I'm going to do better." Like everybody can say that. Everybody, you could, you're allowed to change your opinion once you know better. So but just you, do that. <laughs> you have to do that shit. For like genuine reasons and to want to know better so that you can do better, not just for you, but for everybody the fuck else and not just for your your pockets. Right. A lot of people are going to swat away your motherfucking attempt at an apology any goddamn way. And you have to understand and accept that. If you, you are do. truly you remorseful, then you get that. it. But if it's you, just you, about your money, like you said, then you inevitably going to say something the fuck stupid again because your heart is not really in the work. Exactly. Your heart is in exactly. the public perception. And that can't be what's most important. Because I was just getting ready to say so many people show eventually whether they were doing that work because they want to keep their money or because they actually want to do differently or or be different. You know what I mean? So you got to not be so quick all of the time to have the last word or know what you're talking about or be so whatever the fuck when people are trying to talk you down, whatever, because, girl, like I was thinking after this. You know, I was—I don't remember what. Maybe I was playing Saints Row, this video game, and one of the characters on there is Terry Crews, and I was just like, "Man, Terry Crews been giving so much of the shit that I fucking like. Like, this is so goddamn annoying." <laughs> but you know, I thought about it, and I'm like, Don Lemon once upon a time was he a big did. old raccoon. He was, and now look at him <laughs> telling the truth every night on CNN. He has all but invited <laughs> Donald Trump to a freestyle rap battle. <laughs> In Washington, D.C. Don Lemon is just no longer playing anybody's game. Exactly. So who knows? It can Whatever happen, goes. but you have to be open to it. Don Lemon went to Ferguson and learned some shit or re-remembered some shit, whatever it was, <laughs> and came back a different person. And he has proved that consistently because I know I personally used to drag the fuck out of Don Lemon all the time. Oh, who didn't? All the time. Yeah. All the time. Yeah. Nigga was ridiculous. But now... Don Lemon acts like he has some fucking sense. I'm not saying anybody is like irredeemable, but you have to show people that you really are trying to do better. And I hope your conversation with Trina inspires her to learn exactly how she fucked up and how she can do better going forward because a lot of her fans were deeply hurt and disappointed by that. Now, Terry Crews fans, 
have probably already given up because this is not this nigga's first time at the rodeo, you know? That's what I'm saying. It's we like... been did this with Terry Crews. We did it when he decided that, you know, he needed to apologize to black men because he was dismissive. When <laughs> That's they what about, I forgot about. Yeah, Thank all that you. bullshit where he acted like, you know, us supporting him was, it was something wrong with us for that and all that shit. And then the shit with Gabrielle was just like, if you didn't already stop fucking with him, then that did it. So at this point, it's just like, so you just going to sit over there and coon for the white folks then and then tell that's us how it feels that <laughs> that calling you a coon means we're black supremacists. Uh, where is our institutional power? I would love to know. Where is it? <laughs> if I could just have a tiny piece. of it. I would love to know. OK, <laughs> because <laughs> the white people make it look very nice and super fun. So where is the I would love my supremacist power. Oh, wait, I don't have it because that's and not well, a fucking thing. Shut the fuck up. Ugh. I just don't understand how Black Lives Matter has twisted and been mutated Man. into Man. so many other things by the opposition. It doesn't make any sense. It couldn't be more of a basic, straightforward sentence. So like, right, but that's the problem. They truly don't believe it. And so they will contort well, themselves however they need to to say anything but that. Because when it come right fucking down to it, if you haven't been paying attention over the past 12 days, sweetie, news for you. Black lives do not matter to this country. And that's why we have to keep telling them that we are human beings and we are just as valid as any of them. That's why we have to do it. Because how many of us have died at the hands of police? Before and after cell phone footage. How many of us? And all the things y'all tell us to do don't fucking work. No, I, Make sure your hands are what? always visible. Make sure you're polite. Make sure you da 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 die and blah 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 and wear a suit and get a degree and everything y'all tell us it's, to do don't stop us from being killed by them. It's almost like... <laughs> There's nothing we can <laughs> do about it. It's almost like it's the blackness. <laughs> it's like, if no matter what I do, I could still be killed. It must be something else. It's something What do we all what have is in it, you guys? Common? I don't, I'm going to have to think on that, but. Can I phone a friend? It's got to be something, you know, because <laughs> the same thing, was it, was it Henry Gates who, was like going into his home and had white folks call the police on him because they didn't realize that that was his house. They just saw a nigga outside and called the police. That happens to black people in nice or wealthy neighborhoods all the fucking time. That's what happened to Trayvon Martin. And that neighborhood wasn't even that goddamn nice. But George Zimmerman could not handle the fact that a young nigga was roaming around free in his neighborhood on his block. Like, I don't understand how y'all are still acting like we need to achieve something in order to be better. Sandra Bland had like, her license and registration. Who did that stop? Or it's just like the glaring fact that white people consistently do the opposite of all of the things that you're telling us to do all of the Always. time. Always. And the police basically buy them breakfast. So I don't understand. You know what white people love to do? Talk back to the police. Oh, and with a crazy attitude. They love that shit. You know what? They threaten the cops and everything. All the time. Get right up in their fucking face. They can have weapons out in public. And don't get guns drawn on them or nothing. It's almost Weren't they like, just in the streets with ma- with machettes and all kinds of things? <laughs> talking about, <laughs> talking about they tired of being inside. <laughs> like, I don't... What are we... How are we missing... It's free information. It's not... You don't have to pay to know this. Man. Um, it's just really ridiculous. I, I want another you person to do better. Who, uh, another person who received some backlash... I think this past week was rapper YG who shot the video for his song, fuck the police at a black lives matter rally. Um, several people found it to be, uh, inappropriate mm-hmm. and uh, basically accused him of trying to capitalize off of, uh, the movement and the protests for his own, whatever. Uh, and he responded with his own Instagram paragraphs, basically saying, um, you got to understand that a lot of people out there see me as a nigga. He says, they don't see me as, yeah. they don't see the black, 
I mean, I did. <laughs> they don't see the black proud man. They see a kid from Bompton and they expect violence. They hear FTP and they think I'm going to come and burn my city. So we showed up and did it right. We proved them wrong. The real story here is me and Black Lives Matter brought out 50,000 people today to peacefully protest and unite for change. I wanted to document that. So when they hear this song and think we rec- we are reckless and violent. They see a peaceful protest of all different people coming together for a common cause. That is history. That is breaking down these stereotypes on our people and our neighborhoods. There's some more. You can go read it for yourself. It's not all good. right, nigga. <laughs> so my thing is, what are you talking about? <laughs> like, I don't understand how. I think that. Um, there were enough black people, um, really people in general, who were sharing things on the internet that showed uh, examples of the pre- the peaceful protest that, you know, white folk were trying to say was something else. Mm-hmm. I don't think that YG was the key to truth in the fact that uh, these protests have been mostly peaceful, or at least that we have been coming at it with peace. Again, free information. I didn't even have to try hard to know that. Um, I don't see why you couldn't have just gone out there and protest and just made it about the actual movement and like the work that needs to be done. And then just shot a fucking video for your song some other time. Mm-hmm. And you could have even brought in a whole bunch of extras and stuff and made it look like a protest or something later. Yeah, I don't know. That probably would have cost more money. So, you know. I really feel like YG in California alone could have got 50 bodies in place and offered them Capri Sun and some lemon <laughs> jeans. I don't bl- like <laughs> Whatever. I just nobody was bicking back being boo at the motherfucker protest, nigga. Like people are out there actually trying to get some work done. It just wasn't the time. You have to again read the room and understand what's going on. Cause I don't think that his heart was in the wrong wrong place. I think his heart heart was in the right place, but his bandana was somewhere else with the rest of his mind. All right. And again, you gotta like just check the temperature of what's going on on here. Everybody is like on edge. None of us have time for the bullshit. We're that tired. Yeah, he's kind of like Terry Crews to me because I remember watching Nipsey's funeral and him talking about how <laughs> see, I didn't see they that. had to raise some pretty ass light skinned daughters and all. I remember him saying that ignorant <laughs> ass shit out loud live at Nipsey's funeral. So my expectations for YG are below the fucking dirt. <laughs> So when I saw that shit, I was like, of course that nigga turned a fucking protest into a video shoot. Of course he did. Um, On the other side of things, Kanye West is quietly... (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Kanye West popped up at some protests in Chicago. Also reportedly donated $2 million to charities for Ahmaud Arbery, Breonna Taylor, and George Floyd. He also apparently pledged to cover the legal costs for Ahmad and Breonna's families, as well as paying the tuition for George Floyd's six-year-old daughter, Gianna. Um, the <sighs> girls are starting to question whether or not Kanye could be walking back into his black Again, much for me. Okay. Much like his wife, when she works to get Black people out of prison and stuff like that. I'm not going to sit here and act like you're not doing something great. I can, you know what I'm saying, keep both of these eyes God gave me open. Mm -hmm. And um, the wits that I have left. I can keep those about me and just try to call a spade a spade. You know what I mean? I'm not going to sit up here and be like, well, you know, that they don't even blah, 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 blah. Great thing that you did. Nice thing that you did. I hope that your heart is also in the right motherfucking place and it isn't a thing. I hope that, you know, Chris Jenner don't even know that you did that shit. Whatever. <laughs> but 
again, like I said, there's like action you have to put into stuff and not just words. These could be actions, but sometimes Kanye does a little something where he's like, oh, look at that. And then he's like, yeah, me and Trump just went to the arcade yep. and we played some Mortal Kombat. I think he's the smartest person living and there's something wrong with you niggas. <laughs> like, like, so I don't. He's liable to do that shit. Right. <laughs> You know, but I would love nothing more than to have George Bush don't care about black people, Kanye back. I just have a hard time believing oh that God. he would be that person while still being married to Kim Kardashian. I don't believe it. But either way, if, you know, if George Floyd's daughter don't have to worry about college tuition and that's because of Kanye West, well, I will say kudos. Other than that, yeah. nigga, <laughs> I got both of my eyes on you. Absolutely. Like, I'm not going to speak to your real intentions because we'll see that further down the exactly. line in your actions. But hell yeah, open your fucking purse. I actually thought, and this is how 2020 really got me fucked up. Because I actually thought, you know, maybe more of these niggas should pay attention to Kanye and just give your fucking money and shut the fuck up. Don't tweet mm-hmm. nothing about your opinions. Don't get on Instagram live talking about how you're with the movement, but you condemn looting or whatever. Maybe you should just sit back, open your big ass fucking purse, give money to black people who need it and let that be that. You just reminded me of something I skipped over, which was Samantha Ware's response to Leah Michelle's uh, apology, where she said she said something like perceived per. Purse, purse, cedar, cedar. Open your purse, <laughs> and then she put a link. <laughs> yes. And then she posted a link to um <laughs> um, to the GoFundMe for James Scarlock's family, or the the one that his family organized for him. James Scarlock being um one of the protesters that was gunned down by, I think, a bar owner. Right. In Oma. I think so. so. Samantha was like, perceived you purse, your purse, you're going to open your purse. And, Please and do. Put some money behind it. Yeah. I think you're right. I think that more people definitely should be like, you know what? I'm going to just use the just money, give your money, the resources that I have to change some lives for the better and not saying anything. But I do think like in situations like Kanye West, you know what I mean? I kind of need you to <laughs> like, I kind of need for, I would love a day of, you know, old Kanye, if he is to return, to be like, here's what all that shit was about. And um, again, Chris doesn't know anything about this. I'm speaking from my heart. And let's go through all of the fuck ups that I made as well and talk about them. I mean, yeah, that would be fun. But the words are very cheap with me when it comes to Kanye West. He's going to have to show it over and over and over. That paired with action, I think, would make more of a difference because I think a lot of people are die. Well, not dying. That's extra. But like a lot of people would love to be in love with Kanye again or miss, you know, the Kanye mm-hmm. that they were in love with. And I'm just saying, like, in in a world where you could have that again, I feel like it would take things like this as well as acknowledgement of the stuff that just kind of fuck people up. Right. You know? But true. because you could, like I said, you could still <laughs> be playing words with friends with Donald Trump and we don't know that stuff. And then you, you know, take some money and give it to whoever the fuck. So that's true too. I but know. I think Kanye knows that he's not going to say nothing smart. Cause otherwise, why wouldn't you have done it? Like the Kanye who got on TV and said, George Bush doesn't care about black people when Katrina destroyed New Orleans, that Kanye West would not have hesitated to use his social media platforms to talk about what's going on. He probably would have been in the fucking streets, actually, at protests, talking like, I just don't, I feel like Kanye... Some somebody decided that it was smart for him to pay money, but also that it was smart for him not to talk about how he really feels. Oh, I'm not saying that he is there now or ever will be again. You know what I'm saying? I'm just <laughs> right. I'm just saying if it does happen, if it is possible, I don't see it being in a world where he doesn't have like a real unfiltered yeah. 
conversation about all of that stuff. I think that this is great stuff as well, but I think that, you know, there should be an album maybe about it or something, but also maybe I'm just being compli- completely like naive or asking too much or giving a fuck where I should. And I don't know, whatever. But Kanye West for a lot of people was like a huge disappointment. And I think a lot of people. Oh, love- definitely for me. Definitely for me. Kanye West broke my fucking heart and I would love to see him do a complete 180 but like you said i don't think that's him right now and if it is ever gonna be him it's it's gonna take some fucking time because that nigga is deep in in trump land in his mind at this point so that's it for the hot tops for this week we're gonna take a break now and we will be back in a second with your listener letters Hey guys, this episode is being brought to you by Patreon. The system, quote unquote, supporting creative people is broken AF and the COVID-19 crisis is making it more obvious than ever. All these algorithms are raggedy, don't make any sense. Quantity over quality and what's easy to sell over what's good. Money, brands, and just about everything else over the people who actually make the things that inspire us. That's why Patreon is here. It offers a better way by helping creators build a more sustainable income source by offering a monthly membership to their most passionate fans. Gives them the freedom to do their best work, the stability they need to build an independent creative career, and a chance to create a more meaningful connection with a supportive audience. In turn, fans get access to exclusive community premium content and the chance to become active participants in the work they love. Personally, I'm subscribed to maybe three or four different um, Patreons. One of them is definitely Issa Rae's. It comes with the sip and all the other black insecure fun stuff Mm -hmm. that comes with that. Um, as well as the fact that it feels good to be able to like know that you're supporting somebody or somebodies that you believe in directly. So if you're a podcaster, video maker, musician, writer, trader, it doesn't matter. If you're a creative person of any kind or simply love one, now's the time to check out patreon.com. It's time to join the millions of fans and creators who are changing the way art is valued. Check out patreon.com. That is P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com. Let them know that we sent you. Go have some fun, support someone dope, and let's move on. Oh. <laughs> All right. So we're back. And it is now time for your listener letters. Yes, it is. The listener letters this week are brought to you by Royal Oils from Head and Shoulders. If you have a question for the read, send it to asktheread at gmail.com. Let's dive right on in with a letter from Voodoo. <clears throat> and she says, I'm a black woman living in the South and I've been married to a white man for three years now. He's great, blah, blah, blah. He ain't why we here. His family is aggressively Caucasian, like they have lived on a farm for most of their lives. And seasoning is a foreign concept. Okay. Now that we're dealing with the aftermath of the George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, and Ahmaud Arbery murders, and the protesting has begun, I have been very vocal and angry about the absolute brutality of it all. I've mostly been vocal on social media, where all seven of his siblings follow me, including a few of his aunts, cousins, etc. Oh, seven. Seven siblings, y'all definitely did grow up on the farm. Seven, that's some country shit. Asian sibling, that's some country shit. (laughs) So, (laughs) as you can imagine, most of them have been silent about the unfortunate events, but some of them have been calling the protesters thugs and animals, and calling for a military presence to handle the situation. Keep in mind that these are all people that I see during family gatherings. Usually we get together on Sundays after church, but with the spread of COVID, we've been getting together less frequently. And while we tend to avoid the topic of politics while together, this has infuriated me to the point where I just don't even want to interact with them or have them around our one-year-old son. My husband has been supportive during this time, but I know he's upset about me just wanting to avoid them entirely. He's also had to talk me out of downright cussing them out. So my question is, how do I go about interacting with his family in the future? Do I just stop talking to them? Do I bring up the topic of black murder and how much it hurts me that they remain silent and complacent? What would you do in this situation with love voodoo? Voodoo, I feel like you asked me conflicting questions. You did. You definitely did. You asked, like, I feel like on one hand, you're asking what you should do, and then you're asking what I would do. And those are, <laughs> those are not the same. Because I'm not going to be with a white person who cannot be vocally anti-racist to their white family. It's just, it's it's not going to happen. I'm just not like, going to do that. God bless, God bless you for even getting me to give you the time of day, to be honest with you, but your family too? Like, I don't know. So, um... Nigga, I'm tired I, thinking about it. <laughs> 
I think that it's uh, like, I wouldn't fault you for making the effort. Cause as we've said a million times now, you know, it's the people who fight the hardest to remain on that side to remain in their privilege what like they're the ones who need to wake the fuck up the most mm-hmm. and it's those who are you know what i'm saying adjacent to them or whatever who need to be really fighting for them to do so if your did you say husband or boyfriend husband if your husband is not doing that shit um, I don't really see why you should have to. It's not your fucking family. I don't understand how um, you're in a relationship with him. Relationship with him, and could start the letter off by saying he's not what it's about or whatever the fuck. So, but these are his farm raised family members <laughs> that don't know what the fuck they're talking about. So I don't understand why it should even be left on you to have to to say any fucking thing to him. Like this isn't your adoptive family or whatever the fuck. Then, like, girl, why do you have to? Because, like I said, on the topic of what I would do, <laughs> I would not do any motherfucking thing because okay. I would have been long gone. That's it, right there. Body. That is Period. it. I, if I'm married to you or de- whatever the fuck, these are people that I'm, are going to be in my life around me regardless. At, at some point, even if it's once a year, I'm going to have to see them. And I don't even want to see them that once because they're the worst. So it's like it calls everything into question. And if that isn't enough for that motherfucker to get his ass up and be like, let me talk to my seven siblings and my mom and daddy and auntie and whoever the fuck else. And I mean, why? Mm-hmm. But again, you asked me what I would do. <laughs> And what you should do. I don't think it's up to black people to be, you know, doing African American studies courses with every white person in their motherfucking life. I do think that it's important to try to get um, them to think differently, give them resources or whatever if you want to. But I don't think it's up to you to try and convert racists that ain't even your motherfucking relatives and are only in your life because you chose to date a white man or marry a white man. Right. I wouldn't. So I don't know where that leaves you, but that's all I got. Yeah. This actually goes out to all of you in a relationship with white people who are thinking about sending an email because you have a problem with your white significant other. If that person cannot be vocally and boldly anti-racist to their family when talking about what's going on in the world right now, then that is not the white person for you. Don't even ask me what you should do with that white person because the answer is leave. How are you going to be a whole nigga married to a white person who cannot tell their family, yo, y'all are fucked up for the things you say and do and for the fact that you don't care about this? Like, if your significant other can't just stand up and say that, then I don't think you have any reason to be with that person. But they're if, the ones that need to do that shit. Exactly. That's not up to you because they, first of all, they don't listen to niggas. No way. Exactly. Secondly, you can give all the resources and learning materials and workshops that you want to do. White people know what they've done to us. I saw an old video clip of Fannie Lou Hamer talking about the shit that's gone on in this country. And she was talking about protests that had um, started popping up because niggas was sick of the treatment. Even back then, surprise, surprise. Like we said, shit's not new. And she said in those exact words, they know what they've done to us. That stuck with me because they do. You can sit here and give them all the materials and talk about statistics and all that shit. They know. They know that we're unfairly targeted by the police. It was set up that way. They like it like that. If they're not saying, hey, this is fucked up. I need to do something. I need to use my white skin to change the way this is. Then they are in the way of progress, girl. So, yes, if I were you and I did not want to leave my husband, then I would let him know. I'm simply not ever, and and that goes for my child, who is black as well. I'm simply not ever going to be around them people or speak to them again. And I don't care if you don't like it. That is your cross to bear because you are the one who married a black person and procreated with me. And so this is what you have to deal with. You are confronted now with the realities of racism in this country because you decided to bring me into your family. So you have to decide how you're going to fucking handle it. But like Kip Fury said... I personally would have got the fuck out of there because you're not going to do this to me. You're just not a white man. 
I'm sorry. When I was young, we used to always have to say like a white man would have to be the finest fucking white man in the world. And that's still true. But he would have to be fine as fuck and also not at all racist. And I mean, not at all racist. And that's the bare minimum to even talk to me. And I need to see it. It's not performative shit. I need to see it in every aspect of your life. If anti-racism does not reflect in your personality, in your character, in the way you talk to others, in the things you do, in the ways you shop, then you're not anti-racist. And I'm not going to be with you. Like, I, it's just that simple. So... My parents don't give a fuck what I be talking about. You think your parents don't give a fuck what I be talking about? Come your on, white parents? Come on, what the, calm what the, the fuck black on. fuck I be talking about? The racist Absolutely people? Absolutely the fuck not. I don't even understand why. It, the the people who need to really be getting off of their asses, like the people who I was referring to before, who I feel like now's the time for them to be like, you know what? All this shit that you niggas been talking about for, <laughs> for years and years and years and years and years. That shit doesn't make sense now. I'm starting to get it. Yes. Black Lives Matter. Let's just like those people are are people like your husband, who are right within the families, you know, right alongside motherfuckers that are the problem. Because if there's anybody who's going to possibly be able to maybe get through to them, it would be their white relative. You ain't going to yep. be able to do shit that's going to make them fucking think any differently. Look how many young white people are on TikTok and shit like that bawling their fucking eyes out because they have parents that are fucking racist. Yep. Parents my for age. Reasons, <laughs> they, for whatever reason, are blessed to know better and are super frustrated because their parents or whoever the fuck it is that's around them, you know, are racist as fuck and have no intention on thinking or doing anything fucking differently. So if they're white kids, can't even get through to them, what the fuck makes you think that you're going to be able to do that shit? And why? I, I don't give a fuck. I could tell you all the live long day don't want to be around your motherfucking family. Like, I don't even want to have to consider that shit. I don't want you to be looking at me with no puppy dog eyes because we spent the last five Christmases at our house and your mama want us to come over and eat that dry ass dressing or what or stuffing or whatever it is that they call it. And I'm not, it's not going to happen. I'd rather yeah. just go. I can't be with somebody who's not on the same page with me about black people and our worth. And that goes for any race, but especially for white. I'm just not yeah. going to do it. So best of luck to you, sis. Let us know how it goes. This next question comes from Dot, who says, I've been estranged from, estranged, sorry, from my Nigerian single mother for three years now for reasons relating to psychological and spiritual abuse and manipulation. The time away has seen me grow through realizations and reflections about myself and the near three decades of allowing her opinion of my life and all the ways I have been a failure for not being a doctor, lawyer or engineer to eat away at my self-esteem. I have only been able to truly see myself because I left home and never looked back after she insisted on taking away my keys and had me go through the charade of announcing myself each time I returned home, pretending I was a stranger. What the fuck? The last time I was allowed back in, I gathered a few suitcases, said goodbye and vowed to never speak to her again. It was hard at first, but life without her daily soundtrack of my failures and shortcomings has worked wonders for my psyche. That and finally seeing a therapist after years of believing it was culturally improper to air dirty laundry when I just needed Jesus. Relatable. Okay. Here's the issue. I started talking to a Nigerian from back home who is kind, successful, and patient. He's held a candle for me for four years, even though I have been cold and distant, and we've both had other relationships in the interim. Because we were introduced by a mutual family elder, he has been in contact with my mother pre-estrangement and after me leaving. Fast forward to now, and I've decided to give this long distance thing a chance. He moves really quickly, knows what he wants, and is convinced that I'm the love of his life. The snag is that in his religiosity and West African idealism, he believes that a reconciliation with my mother is a must, especially since both of his parents have passed away. He's a grown man, so I've never tried to stop him from talking to her, but he insists that for the sake of future children I never agreed to have, they should have their grandparent in their life. Though I've forgiven my mother, <laughs> though I've forgiven my mother, I'm a firm believer that forgiveness does not mean returning. Letting my egg donor into my life for any reason would jeopardize my growth and sanity. He's got his redeeming qualities and I could see myself going to love him one day, but guilting and coercing me into reestablishing contact may lead me to may lead me 
to ultimately walk away. I know we need to talk and I've asked him to read up on estrangement since it's a non-existent concept over there. (laughs) His insistence on love healing the world is grating my nerves because it ignores the reality of why estrangement is non-negotiable for me. Do you guys have any advice or any thoughts on the situation? Thanks, Dot. Dot. I revel in any opportunity to tell niggas to get the fuck out of here. <laughs> so the whole time I was listening to this, I was kind of thinking you could have said it then, you could have said it then, you could have said it then. Mm. And it doesn't seem like you ever got to it. Um, it doesn't seem like you have any uh, significant ties to this man yet. So I don't understand why you can't just tell him to fuck off if it means that much to him. I don't understand why um, you would consider jeopardizing whatever progress you've made in your mental health or your journey in mental health um, just because this nigga basically demands that you fix whatever or work on whatever with your mama right for him like i don't i don't believe that a child needs their grandparent um grandparents are you know they're great bonuses if you have one (laughs) yeah they usually will give you a mint or you know let you get away with stuff Mm -hmm. sometimes that your parents won't let you get away with grandparents can be great fun necessary no um definitely need someone in the household to feed you and raise you into all of those things it sounds like if you were to have a child uh you'd got that covered i'm not really understanding where this nigga is coming from it sounds like bullshit to me um and i would definitely be getting back on the dating scene whenever we're allowed to so i don't really know what more to tell you um I don't know anything about Western African uh, familial culture. Like, I don't know anything about that. So Mm. I can't say, oh, well, you know, date, try again. (laughs) I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Try you a different Nigerian guy. I know a lot of Nigerians and they all say the same thing about their parents. They all say the exact same thing about their parents. (laughs) So... (laughs) Yeah, but what does that have to do with her? Like, I mean, I think it's more like culturally people are just like, no, you can't just cut your mama off. And so that's the issue she's running into with this man where he's just insisting that she not do it while he doesn't really understand what's going on. But what the fuck? But I'm saying, what the fuck does that have to do with him now? Like, how would that, how could that factor into a relationship that they, I just find it all to be like I, I respect being like oh yeah let's work on stuff we know with our family and healing or whatever but it doesn't sound like she needs healing it sounds because she said she's forgiven her mama she's in therapy she's in a better place etc cetera, etc cetera. I don't understand why she should be like well let me go ahead and dig up all of that fuckery and you know risk making things bad again mm. or worse or whatever the fuck because this nigga asked me to when it's not his goddamn mama does he even <laughs> nowhere has like i mean yeah okay like i mean i think because they're both in nigeria they probably talk like i think because she says she's never kept him from talking to her so the two of them probably do have a relationship and they were introduced through like a mutual family elder so i mean like know her like know her like like she does Mm, oh well certainly not yeah certainly not do you do you even know her in the sense of like the things I've experienced with her, how it's gotten, why I wouldn't want to go back to that kind of thing? Like, I just don't understand why you would do any of that stuff for a nigga. Like, I get that, you know, <laughs> family and things like that is is very <clears throat> integrated in loads of different cultures, but... I just don't understand why I should risk any of that for a family member for a nigga that isn't in that family that don't even and it's long dis girl tell that nigga to go somewhere but that's right. my two cents I mean I don't disagree I'm all I'm always all for breaking up with these niggas and really like 
I'm I'm rereading. I'm just skimming through your email right quick. And honestly, sis, I don't think you even really want this man. I think he's just there and available. And God only knows what uh, COVID-19 and the quarantine has done to your dating life. But maybe right now he's looking like the best possible option. So you're just like, yeah, I'll entertain this long distance relationship thing. You know, if nothing else is somebody to talk to during the day or whatever right. else. But that doesn't. The way you feel about your mother is the way you feel about her. Clearly, y'all have not been to therapy together or anything. Y'all are not in a place to reconcile and whatever else. And if the person that you are going to make your life partner cannot understand that, then that nigga is just not for you. Now, I do think it's a good idea for you to send him. If you say that culturally, you know, Nigerians don't know what estrangement is i'm i tend to believe that just based off the people i know and the things they've said you can send him i think it's a good idea for you to send him information on what it means why it's important to you i think it's good for y'all to talk like you said and for you to just lay it out there like i don't talk to her because this is the effect she has on my life this is the way she makes me feel you know if you feel like you and him are really that close and you want to preserve whatever this is but i kind of feel like you bored but just in case you're not then, you know, yeah, have the conversation, send the materials and all that other shit. And if he's still like, yeah, but that's your mama and I don't have no parents. So if we have kids, they have to have a grandparent. Then he just needs to find some girl over in Nigeria who will do whatever he wants and and have that situation work out for him the way he wants it to be. Like he has his issues. I think I think this is more important to him because he has lost his parents and lost them just last year. So it's relatively recent. And that's fine for him to have those issues. He has to work through that. But that doesn't mean you have to give up what matters to you for this relationship. Exactly. You don't have to give up what matters to you in order to be with somebody. And if y'all have this place where it's a super hard line for both of you and you just can't come to an agreement, then the relationship is just not meant to be. Let it go and find somebody else. Next time he asks you to talk to your your mom or whatever, I would just say, I'm not going to. So what now? Like, what's the next thing? <laughs> right. What do we do after that? Because I'm not going to do it. Do you still want to be with me or not? Nah? Because you just need to, if you're going to be with me, you need to go into it with the expectation that I will never speak to my mother again. Like, don't waste my time and say it's all good because I'm not going to do it. If you bring this up again in 12 months, yes. it's still going to be a no. And so we can really just save each other a lot of time if you say the truth right if you feel like this is not is going to be an issue in the in the future let's just end it now yes i'm not going to do that especially not for you so please stop fucking bothering me about now? it it's just like ed and rose on 90 day fiance how he went over to the philippines do not watch that so i'm sad for you friend because it's very good but basically this girl wanted another baby and he knew that and he didn't want no more kids, but he went over there anyway, talking about he didn't want to lose her. But naturally, when she found out he didn't want to have kids, she broke up with him and left. And it's like, you could have saved your money. You could have saved your trip, like all this time. You could have did all that if you had just told me up front and been honest. Hey, I don't want to have no more kids. Oh, well, I really do. That's not something I'm willing to compromise on. Oh, well, I'm not willing to compromise either. OK, then guess what? Both of us need to find somebody the fuck else. Because this is not a match. So I I think this man is just not a match for you. But, you know, maybe after a little bit of enlightenment, he can see your side of it and y'all can continue to build. But if not, then don't hesitate in cutting that nigga loose and letting him go and letting that yep. be that. All right. I am going to stop it here because I have a couple of things to say during the read. So I don't want the episode to run too long. Make sure you check out our sponsor, Royal Oils by Head and Shoulder. I absolutely love the line. It makes it so easy to keep your hair and scalp moisturized and healthy. You can find out why I love it so much when you pick up all the products in the collection. It's available at Walmart stores or at Walmart.com. We're going to take a quick break and then we'll be right back. So listen, uh, if you're anything like me, you're probably doing a lot of online shopping on regular days. And during COVID, maybe you are having a lot of online shopping fun. So let me tell you what you need to get into. It's Honey, the free online shopping tool that will save you a bunch of money online. Honey automatically finds the best promo codes and applies them to your cart when you're shopping online automatically, which makes online shopping finally feel as easy as it's supposed to be for shopping on, I don't know, Target, DoorDash, Sephora, Macy, wherever you want to go. You will go to checkout, a little box drops down, and all you have to do is click 
apply coupons. Wait a few seconds, it'll scan for every promo code on the internet, and then you could just basically watch the prices drop. Honey's found it's over 17 million members, over $2 billion in savings. I've used it myself. I have, honey, I'm literally looking at it on my computer right now. It's yeah. in there. It's free to use. And it's basically just like, here, I'm going to let you keep some money just because I'm a good friend. So <laughs> not using honey is literally just passing up free money. It's free to use and it installs in a couple seconds. It's part of the PayPal family now. So get honey for free at joinhoney.com slash the read. That is joinhoney.com slash the R-E-A-D. Go check them out. Save some money. Let's move on. Hey, y'all, this week's episode is also brought to you by HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit, because they're offering fresh, high quality ingredients every week for a super flavorful experience that will help you break out of your recipe rut. More and more of us have been cooking at home lately, and HelloFresh lets you skip those trips to the grocery store and makes home cooking fun, easy and affordable. With HelloFresh, you can get dinner on the table in just about 30 minutes and you can save up to 28 percent by using HelloFresh versus grocery store shopping and not only only do HelloFresh's pre-portioned ingredients mean there's less prep work. It also means less food waste, which is especially important for those of us who maybe live alone and typical recipes, you know, have four, five, eight servings. And I just do not have a whole family to feed. You know, it's just me. I'm going to eat this a grand total of twice. I don't need no more than that. HelloFresh cuts down on all the waste. Plus their packaging is almost entirely made from recyclable content. Plus HelloFresh is flexible and it fits your lifestyle. You can easily change your preferences, skip a week whenever you need to. And they have something for everybody, including vegetarian and family friendly recipes for those of you who don't live alone every single week. I love it again, especially because they just send me what I need I don't have extra produce and meat or whatever going bad in my refrigerator because I never got the chance to cook it. It's just what I need. It's simple instructions. Everything is pre-portioned out so you can just open up and get to work. You don't have to go through all the extra. It's just super convenient, very useful, especially now during quarantine times. So go to HelloFresh.com slash the read 60 and use code the read 60 to get $60 off your first three weeks. And that includes free shipping on your first box. Again, HelloFresh.com slash the read six zero and code the read six zero to get sixty dollars off your first three weeks and free shipping on your first box. Additional restrictions do apply, so v- please visit HelloFresh.com for more details. Let them know if you're in Crystal sent you. All right, let's wrap up the show. Okay, we're back and it is time for the read. I I'm going to step back and let you do your thing. I only have two things, and one of these is probably one of yours. So <laughs> well, if you were talking about the um, the situation with J.K. Rowling, Rowling, yep. that's I had a feeling we were the same. So feel free to uh, jump in whenever you want to. <coughs> but <clears throat> so J.K. Rowling, who of course wrote the Harry Potter series and made a bajillion fucking dollars off of it has been saying some transphobic shit for a while now, actually. It's been, you know, little things here and there where it's like, did she mean it like that? Did she not? People calling her out on it, her kind of arguing about it. Right. So I think I knew long time ago that she meant every last word of this shit, but she really fucking stepped in it last week when she talked about how, I don't know what it is about her, but she is like, really fucking obsessed with the idea that gender identity and biological sex are not the same thing. It's like crazy to her. So she wrote, if sex isn't real, there's no same sex attraction. If sex isn't real, the lived reality of women globally is erased. I know and love trans people, but erasing the concept of sex removes the ability of many to meaningfully discuss their lives. It isn't hate to speak the truth. Keep in mind that this was after she retweeted uh, an article, uh, an opinion piece that was titled Creating a More Equal Post-COVID-19 World for People Who Menstruate, which is all about investing in menstrual health and hygiene. And she's like, people who menstruate, isn't there a word for those types of people? (laughs) No, bitch. (laughs) I know what you're trying to say here. You're trying to say women menstruate. But the fact of the matter is that not every woman menstruates and plenty of non women menstruate. And so people just say people who menstruate instead of saying women when they want to be more inclusive. 
The problem with these statements is like if you were just pointed out, you know, just the blatant transphobia. But also nobody's saying that sex isn't real. Everybody knows that (laughs) same sex attraction exists. Everybody knows that women have different lived realities across the globe. But also being a woman and being and having female sex organs are not the same thing. And that's where she refuses to get in fucking line. It's like to her, a woman simply must have ovaries and a pussy and a uterus. And if you don't, then your womanhood means less or is somehow a threat to hers, which is just not the case. It's just not the case. Nobody is erasing your lived reality as somebody whose pussy bleeds every month, bitch. Nobody's erasing that for you. You still have to get your fucking tampons every fucking month. No one's taking it away. That was like the most confusing to me. You know what I'm saying? I feel like I learn something new every day and I'm always welcome to learn more about the trans experience and things like that. But I was like, I don't see how someone living in their truth as far as their identity goes erases the lived realities of a cisgender woman. Like I don't understand how it any of that impedes on your reality your life or anything that you're talking about or expressing it's just i I don't get right how those two things are are on the same page for you yeah and bringing up your mythical trans friends means nothing to me in a in a follow-up tweet she talked about how she knows some butch lesbian and blah 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 like girl right who cares that's also not the same thing a butch lesbian is not a trans man like those aren't just interchangeable beings like (laughs) gender identity and sexual identity can be two totally different things and for her to be like well we can't just ignore sex blah 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 blah. like girl that's why we have the term transgender nobody's ignoring it like literally we put transgender in front of women or we put cis in front of women so that you know exactly what we talking about but transgender in front of the woman doesn't mean that you're any less of a woman just like cisgender in front of the woman doesn't mean you're any less of a woman and there are plenty of cisgender women who can't get pregnant can't have babies don't have periods for whatever fucking reason and they're still women because my womanhood is inside of me it is me it's nothing that anybody can say or do to take that away from me. I have never once doubted who I was as a woman. Not ever, not one time in my life. And there is nothing that J.K. Rowling or anybody else could say to make me doubt who I am to me. And it should be the exact same for you. If trans women talking about their lives means that you feel like less of a woman, you need to ask yourself why the fuck that is. Why does somebody else's life have an effect on how you look at yourself? Is it because you're a hateful ass bitch? Because I think it is, bitch. See, that's why the movies are bad. And I want you niggas to stop talking to me about them goddamn movies. I know that's not, I know that's not fucking relevant, but I said it anyway. Don't talk to me about that bitches in the movies no fucking more. Like, how you just gonna be at, like. Well, technically, she would have a lot less to do with any of the movies than she did the books. Because- oh, she didn't write the script? That's not her? No, she's not um, the scripts. Okay, I've been blaming her for that. All right. So, yeah, no. Well, whatever, but still. I think she just sort of gets to kick back and get the money from everything that has to do with Harry Potter from now on. Which is sad because that means she'll never be broke. Like, you can't cancel somebody who cannot be poor, basically. Not in this world we live in right now. You just yeah, can't you can. take. I mean, you can, you can say that they're canceled, but you can't have a meaningful effect well, on you, their finances <laughs> all you can do is say that they're canceled you ain't really actually doing anything you're just making a statement you know say you can stop supporting that person surely but loads of people who get quote-unquote canceled will still be fine even if they never make another dollar you know what i mean so it's not like you know her she's so fucking wealthy because of of the monster that the harry potter franchise is yes sure but right like you could still do the fucking work it really blows me over that she wrote a story about this kid who lives in an abusive home thank you and like really didn't know anything about who he was or was trying to come to grips with who he was and then grew to love himself and his existence who he is where he came from even though he is like 
a person that people say don't exist or shouldn't exist or whatever. Like, I don't understand how you wrote all of this stuff that affected so many different kinds of people and still have this persistent, transphobic, like, wording and attitude and tone and all of these fucking things. And yes, please stop talking to us about your imaginary fucking trans friends because... I don't understand how you could have sensible trans friends or sensible friends, period, that know that you speak the way that you do and have been and are like, yeah, girl. So what time's dinner? Like, it doesn't it doesn't add up to me. And I just wish that you would just be quiet, because I think, thankfully, like a lot of people who are Harry Potter fans are fans of the Potter verse. Potter more, whatever the fuck that shit is called. Yeah. A lot of the Harry Potter fans, you know what I mean, are are able to separate the fiction and the stuff that they love so much from this woman who wrote it that is turning out to be just a giant idiot. Right. And I feel like a lot of us didn't see that shit coming either because she used to cuss Donald Trump out and say, you know, s- snarky things in relation to that and whatnot and it was like yes jk drag these heathens but here you go everybody's got their thing so yeah it's it's disappointing for people who really do love harry potter and that includes so many queer and trans people who saw themselves in the book somehow because harry had so much shit stacked up against him he did have this awful family he was living with that didn't give a fuck about him and all this other shit so it was super relatable for a lot of us but then you just come out and let us know that you really don't give a shit about people and you are gleefully staying ignorant because this is not the first time that jk Rowling has said something dumb about trans people and it's not the first time that somebody has had to fucking educate her about it so i just the have to say said, trying to defend that woman was i don't remember I don't remember what the woman did or said or wrote, but she like lost her job for saying something. Oh, right. Something ignorant. Erasing sex or whatever. They're fucking turf ass bullshit. And whatever she said to that, I don't remember how she worded it, but it was so like, wear whatever you want and have sex with whoever you want to. But, you know, we're drawing the line. On that women are word. still or, us. Right. Like they, she's like, really possessive over women that the word and I just, I just don't care like <laughs> like nobody is coming for your identity sis nobody's right. telling you that your your life and your reality your experiences struggles whatever the fuck misogyny nobody is is coming for any of your things sis at all yes. and to act as if that that is the case especially as a privileged ass white woman who likely like herself is not even in the throes of a lot of the bullshit exactly. that the average woman in a has castle to go somewhere. motherfucking way. <laughs> right. You could literally be in your own motherfucking Hogwarts that you built or had built for you with all your motherfucking money and really just be able to kick back for the rest of your days. So I don't even understand why you're so going so hard. Like, uh, uh, what? yeah. what's happening? You just be quiet. You just yeah. be quiet. Yeah. Fuck the entirety of her. And uh, thank you to Daniel Radcliffe for posting the essay that he did um, on the Trevor Project, which is a nonprofit um, all about like suicide prevention for uh, queer people and basically said, you know, trans women are women. I don't know what the fuck that bitch is talking about, but, you know. All the shit that she said erases your dignity. It erases your identity. And so fuck that. And thank you, Daniel Radcliffe, for... That was smart of you. Yes. For stepping out and saying it, because I'm sure a lot of fans were super fucking hurt by this. And to everybody else, like, J.K. Rowling loves to pretend that turf is some kind of slur, and people are wrong for calling her that, and like, like it's some sort of white woman version of nigger or something. And I don't know if it's just because black womanhood has always been treated differently from white womanhood anyway i'm just not so fucking attached to whatever the fuck it is y'all call it like i know who i am period and i don't give a shit about the rest of it nobody else's opinion about me changes the way i feel about myself so fuck jk rowling and every fucking thing she touches from here on out she ain't shit and are you done did you have anything else to say about that no, Before I think she's I just on. incredibly uh, fortunate that she's not the face of Harry Potter. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, thank she God wrote for that. the books, 
most of us saw her name on it and we just got into the words on the inside that was kind of it and then obviously daniel radcliffe emma and rupert and everybody else at harry potter kind of took it to where it is so right. she's actually fortunate because it probably won't fuck up her money for the rest of them damn it won't uh, fantastic beast movies and harry potter the theme parks and all that other stuff even though she's raggedy because she already done made it and it's not like when you think of harry potter you automatically think of jk rowling first you don't right so. it's not like canceling chrisette michelle like you can take <laughs> away chrisette michelle's money you cannot <laughs> but fuck her anyway and when it comes time to eat the rich, I hope she's up first. So you didn't see her Basquiat skirt because she had on a Basquiat <laughs> skirt. It was I'm important, so you guys. All right. And so I'm going to move on now to something that is very dear and important to me. And I'm going to pass this read. Pass the read like we used to. Okay. And this. Mm, let me see. Did you include a name here? This person calls themselves Big Mad. And Big Mad says, Dear non-black people who all of a sudden decided to care for black lives and now are showing out to protest. While I appreciate the support, I'm going to need y'all to take a couple steps back and remember your place in the movement. Your place is not taking the mic and using it as a therapy moment, questioning why a black woman chose to leave a protest because you considered it to be too early or anything else. I, for one, do not care about how this experience has changed you over the last couple of weeks because I have lived through this shit my entire life. I do not care to hear non-black speaker after the next cry on the mic for an hour about how this isn't fair. Okay. Now, thank you for showing out and supporting your local black community. But for the love of everything, shut the fuck up. Now, to the bitch who asked where I was going when it was obvious the protest was winding down, I was exhausted from attending my fourth protest this week, working on my analysis for graduate school, crying from all the bullshit, signing petitions, donating to organizations, arguing with idiots on the daily, and listening to more non-black people share their fucking feelings. Initially, I saw this as a harmless question, but when I told you I was dehydrated and needed to rest, you quickly responded with, there's water and snacks back there, and paired it with a bullshit smile. I want you to know that this is where you fucked up. I am all too familiar with your kind of activists who only see one form of activism and fail to consider what may be going on behind the scenes for people who participate in the movement. I want to make it clear, no number of black friends that you may have or fuck will ever make you an official member of the black community. I don't know where you get off telling an actual black person how and where they should protest during this time or how you can even call yourself an ally when you pull this type of shit. The part that upsets me the most about this is that this was someone from the Latinx community. I myself am Afro-Latina and I have been dealing with this bullshit since the beginning of time, which now seems to have intensified this time around. You questioning people's participation in a movement is your own way to deal with the guilt you carry from either being anti-black at some point in your life or refusing to call out your anti-black family and friends that I can guarantee you have. Know that I or any other black woman you may come across in life or at a protest is not the one and you better be prepared to get your ass beat the next time you pull that bullshit. Also, you fail to take into consideration that black women are always the ones out in the streets, both trans and cis, every time a black man becomes un an unfortunate victim of police brutality. Every other black person who falls outside the black cis description is forced to stand up for these sub communities, defend themselves against the larger community and mentally prepare ourselves for a whole ass argument with the ashy side just to get our voices heard. Quite frankly, I am fucking tired and I don't need to be told when and where I need to contribute to the movement. A lot of us show up to protest, still deal with the obvious sexist, homophobic, transphobic bullshit being experienced in these communities during these trying times. People who are not black will never understand that and therefore should focus on your own form of activism and leave black women at these protests the fuck alone. As for the assholes in the black community who claim that now is not the time to bring up other issues, here is a big fuck you. If we don't expose the bullshit in our own communities now, then when? How many more lives need to go until you wake the fuck up and see it as being an actual problem side note shout out to the homies who are introverted and have social anxiety that show out to protest i see y'all and i thank you black women please remember to take care of yourselves for as long as you need i love you and i see you thank you and remember to take care of yourselves big med now, I really love this for a few different reasons. First, because I decided over the past week to start protesting in the streets in New York, even though I had previously said that I would not because of the virus. Um, it just got to the point where I 
felt strongly like I needed to be out there. And I'm thankful that, you know, for the most part, people were like, everybody I saw had on a mask. People were keeping their distance anyway. Like there was more space in between people than I've ever seen at protests before. So I felt relatively safe going out there, but also white people, y'all might be new to discrimination and police brutality and dealing with this sort of bullshit. We are not. And so what you can do is police your family, your friends, your community, non-black people. You can feel free to do the same, but black people are fucking tired. And we were actually born fucking tired. You just now found out about this. You just now realized how deep and serious and real it was, but we never got the chance to not know it. As soon as we were old enough to know the difference between race, we found out very quickly that people were not going to like us because of ours. We never got to not know that. It ain't a black kid leaving fifth grade who don't know that the white kids look at him different or treat him different or hasn't experienced some sort of bullshit. Even at that young age, we don't get to be adults and coast through life, never realizing how bad it is for black people, because those are our people. That is our experience. That is the trauma that we inherit in our DNA. So what you need to do is not talk to us about how we handle this shit. If anything, y'all need to be out there. Y'all need to be the main motherfuckers out there where black people, while black people stay at home and fucking rest and try to find some fucking joy because we've been out there. Like I said earlier, I can't tell you how many times I have protested because the police decided that they could just kill a fucking black person and get away with it. I can't tell you how many times I've done that. I'm not new to this. So if I decide to go out or if I don't, regardless of what my activism looks like, you as a not black, non-black person don't have the space to critique it. Mind your fucking business. This is my community. This is my life. This is our shit. You just got here. So act like it. And that's it. All right. I'm done. Okay. So first things first for me, I wanted to say uh, a couple of things to Megan McCain. She tweeted on the 2nd of June, my neighborhood in Manhattan is eviscerated and it looks like a war zone. De Blasio and Cuomo are an utter disgrace. This is not America. Our leaders have abandoned us and continue to let great American cities burn to the ground and be destroyed. I never could have fathomed this. Womp. Now, a lot of people probably would have read that and been like, oh my goodness, what's going on in Manhattan? In Manhattan? I Nothing. don't understand. <laughs> Um, but thank you to Kristen Bartlett, writer, com- comedy writer, uh, Full Frontal, with Samantha B and SNL and stuff. She retweeted Megan's tweet and said, Megan, we live in the same building and I just walked outside. It's fine. <laughs> um, there was another woman I saw who retweeted this and echoed the same sentiment as Kristen. I live in the building. I'm outside. Everything's okay. It's fucking Not cool. sure exactly what's going on. So from there, people quickly realized that Megan was once again saying some shit that wasn't true and didn't make no damn sense. She took to Twitter the following day and said, one, I'm six months pregnant. A gossip organization is about to run a story of where me and my family are currently. I sent a tweet yesterday based on the news I saw happening in Midtown. We all have been watching all over different media platforms. Then she said... Two, wait, where is that tweet? This dumbass. <laughs> I lost it, but she's had another tweet where she basically said, you know, I support the movement, but I'm heavily against mm-hmm. like the destruction of the city that I've loved since I moved here when I was 18. I saw that shit. Like, what the fuck does that even mean? Right. Whatever, whatever. So to all of these things, I say, Megan, one, what the fuck does you being six months pregnant have to do with you making shit up? Nothing. Acting like her it's, safety is at risk. <laughs> Bitch, shut up. Don't nobody care where you at. Is reaching that far somehow good for the baby? Or what? why did you bring that part up? I don't understand why you mentioned you being pregnant. Because it doesn't really have anything to do with anything else. But maybe I'm missing something. Two, what exactly... Were you watching that showed Midtown Manhattan looking like Dunkirk? Because what you described <laughs> sounded like the end of Avengers Endgame. 
it sounded you literally said eviscerated and looks like a war zone I, i'm not denying that things were not damaged somewhere in manhattan during protests or whatever no i haven't seen anything personally but eviscerated <laughs> it's like no nope. republicans be leaning on hyperbole like dirty spray you niggas be doing too much like a white Republican could like fall off a bike and scrape their knee in a cul-de-sac somewhere. And it'll be like, I, I severed my leg in a, a war torn wasteland and <laughs> nary a ration is in sight. And I don't know if I'll make like, I don't understand why everything has to be above and beyond and super, super extra, but it doesn't make any fucking sense. And you set yourself up. You played yourself when you decided to jump out the window with all that motherfucking extra shit. If somebody had busted out a window or something like that and wanted the fucking in the lobby of your building or, or the building across the street, some shit like that, you could have said that or nothing. But you wanted to be extra again because you're you. Lastly, I would like for this to be a situation that all of the Karens of the country pay attention to. Karens of the world. When you just create these false narratives, like to serve your own intentions, your own selfish desires and things like that. You get called out of your fucking name, unless your name is already Karen. This is how this stuff happens. Stop making shit up. Stop creating fucking stories and whatever the fuck else to aid your, you know, desires for attention or for money or for support of whatever the fucking alliances it is that you have or whatever the fuck it is that you do in the street. Well, nothing wrong with Meghan McCain's building. I think most of us could have probably arrived to that assumption just because it's Meghan McCain. I would love for you to stop playing games right here on the Lord's internet. It's it, We've had enough of it. And quite frankly, enough of you. I don't even understand how you're so comfortable as like, you know, mm-hmm. a talking head or analyst or whatever the fuck it is that you claim to be when you can just flat out lie and be like, yeah, so everything outside looks like, you know, World War Three. But I don't know that. I'm just, you know, it's me and the kids here in Virginia holed up in a cabin and one of them plugged in the fire stick. And I don't know. I just made an assumption. Like, girl, shut the fuck up and be quiet. Um, <laughs> and that was it. Um, other than that, I just wanted to say to all of these companies that are... um coming out with new streaming apps and all of the streaming services on the rise, I'd like to say, let me edit my subtitles. I don't know how many of you do it. I know it isn't many. I know that Amazon Prime definitely does and maybe like one or two others. I don't want to have to pull out my own hair when I'm watching a fucking movie for whatever reason. It's like, I don't know what the fuck I was watching yesterday, but you know, when you have like a movie, whether you're streaming it or it's on a disc or something and the audio will be like real quiet sometimes in scenes with dialogue, but the first time something explodes, it knocks your roof off. (laughs) So I'd be like, I keep my volume down sometimes, but depending on the film, I'll turn the subtitles on. And then you just have some apps that have this default subtitle shit where it's super blocky or just huge and taking up half the goddamn screen. And I find it annoying. I find it unnecessary. And I feel like if Amazon could have had their app for the longest motherfucking time that allows you to choose like the size of the subtitles, whether it has like a background, maybe if the background is transparent or not, all of that stuff is important. All of that stuff matters. And I feel like more of you motherfuckers with apps and things like that need to get into it. And not even just apps. I don't give a fuck what it is. App, TV, game, whatever the fuck. If it comes to subtitles, bitch, I should have the opportunity to choose what those subtitles look like. Stop being annoying. And that's it. Woo. Amen. (laughs) What are you talking about? Something in particular or? I'm not talking about anything in particular. I don't know. Because I just I'm. If there's an app out, I'm probably subscribed to it. I'm on all of the girls. So I don't know which one I would, maybe it was Disney Plus or HBO Max, or I don't know what the fuck I was just watching a movie on last night or two nights ago, but I stopped it because I was just like, this isn't the time where I could blast my TV. I don't feel like blasting my TV just to be able to hear words in a scene or whatever like that. But at the same mm-hmm. time, the subtitles were just driving me fucking insane. Like, Make them smaller or give me the opportunity to make them smaller. I don't fucking like that. It's 2020. It just doesn't make any sense for as long as subtitles have been a thing in media. 
that I just got to go with whatever right. the fuck subtitles it is that you <laughs> That they all still look like that, right? <laughs> and then it's like bugs out when sometimes you'll turn on subtitles and there's something completely off base, like giant orange letters or some <laughs> dumb shit. Like, what were you thinking about? Like, I don't know. Yeah. But I should be the one who gets to choose what the fuck that stuff looks like. And I can't imagine that it is just too hard to program it where at least I could change how fucking big the words are. Get it together. Right. That seems like something they should be able to do. All right. Well, that, that's it. That wraps up this week's episode. Oh. I was going to tell you, remember that game you recommended to me, Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney? Yeah. So yes. I've been, I, I finished like, it's a trilogy and I finished the yeah. first two cases and it has been over a year since I played because I did not want to finish the third and be done with the game. But There's two more games. Are there? Are they on the Switch? When you say the first two cases, are you talking about the first two games? No, I bought one game. It's the Phoenix Wright trilogy, and there are three right, cases in it. Right, but it has the it. first three Phoenix Wright games in it. Oh, those are all games. One game, like the first Phoenix Wright, probably had like three or four cases in it. There's the one with like the two niggas on the set where one of them died. Yes, I, the I did that one. Friend, and then the one with the lake. Okay. On Christmas. Yeah. Like all of those are one game, and then gotcha. there's a second game with a bunch of cases, and a third game with a bunch of cases. So you either you probably finished the first two games. I think so. Well, today I finished the whole thing all together. There is no okay. Well, there are no there more cases to solve, but I was keeping it for all this time. It's literally been over a year because I don't like the things that I like to go away but I was like you know let me just fucking play this game and that's when I realized it's a lot of fucking cop propaganda in this fucking game (laughs) like I hadn't really thought about it last year because things were very different this time last year but when I played it again the other day I was like you know there's a lot of dick sucking of the prosecutors and fucking DA and all this bullshit that I don't really care for but it was I mean, super you're fun. Playing an attorney, yeah, so. you're right. You're literally playing a defense attorney. But I just wanted to say thank you for recommending it because it was right up my fucking alley. And I immediately went to the Nintendo store trying to find another one, but couldn't. So the people yeah, who make fun Phoenix game. right, please make another one because I really want to play again. It is super fun and I enjoyed it. They likely will. It's a pretty per- successful franchise. And the fact that they would remaster or whatever, put like a bundle of the first three games or those three together yeah. is probably a sign that there's interest in doing another one. Right. But yeah, it's a cool game if you like mysteries and stuff like that. It's not mm-hmm. like a Zelda where you have to know 50, 11 different mechanics and stuff to finish the game. You basically just know, need to know how to read and retain information. Right. It's a lot of like problem solving logic kind of stuff, which is why I super, um, super enjoyed it. So thank you friend. But yes, anyway, that wraps up this week's episode. Check us out at this is the read.com. We are on social media at this is the read. Um, you can find our merch at shop And I think that's it for me, friend. Do you have anything else before we get out of here? No, I just wanted to say to everyone that life is some bullshit right now. <laughs> Everybody has a lot on their mind, unless they're like those uh, white people who were sitting for brunch right next to a protest that was going on. That like, was fucking crazy. <laughs> completely tuned out and just living your likely Caucasian life. Um, be easy on yourself. Go easy on yourself. Take a break. It's totally okay to eject for a taste and be like, you know what? Today is for Talenti. And, mm-hmm. you know, the first three seasons of Scandal or whatever, like self-care Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, whatever day it is that you feel like you need to just be like, you know what? I can't do too much of this shit mm-hmm. anymore. I need a break. Whatever a break looks like for you in quarantine, bitch, take it. If it means jogging around your building, bitch, motherfucker, take it. You deserve to be here. Your life means something. And although everything is garbage right now, it doesn't necessarily mean it won't be awesome or or fun or serving to you at some point in the near future. So be kind to yourself. And if somebody is keeping you unkind to yourself, then tell them to ride a dick to hell and do what's best for you. And that's it. <laughs> All right, friend. Thank you so much. On that note, we will see y'all next week. <laughs>